All right, guys, what's going on? This isn't a super polished video. I wanted to try to get something out there to kind of help out people that are playing with their brand new Tango 2s. But I'll tell you what I have in here. Just a quick talk about like what I think of it, how it feels and everything like that. And then a lot of things um, are going to revolve around OpenTX, how the scroll wheel works, uh, some mistakes that I made and things I had to kind of figure out. Um, I had no problem. Some people, I thought you had to like hold it in the Biden button to rebind and flash all of your receivers. I didn't have to do that on any of mine at all. Uh, Flight One definitely made this easy. I had to set up a new radio. Um, it didn't recognize the, the sticks uh, in the proper order, even though I went back in and changed uh, the to T-A-E-R in OpenTX. I tried to copy everything directly from my Tyrannus onto this one uh, to make things, uh, you know, screen for screen to, to kind of make things a little bit easier. Uh, but there were still some things that were a little bit different. Uh, coming from a full-size crossfire person and going back to something like this, um, this operates off of Lua. It doesn't, it's not as fast and uh, precise as the back of the Crossfire module was. So the Lua script can be slow. It's a little buggy. Um, you'll see that in the video here. I just left a little bit of that in just to kind of show you guys uh, what's going on. And there's just a few things I think that need sorted out. There's some visibility issues as far as some things getting cut off because if you think uh, how wide your screen is um, on your Tyrannus and how much information goes across there, there's kind of some stuff on the end that's overlapping and getting cut off. Um, it must be stuff that nobody uses or tests, but like if you put in like an audible alert, um, it'll kind of chop some stuff off when you bind your receiver and the bind is done. If you go into the Lua, um, I assume it says bind complete, but that's like cut off. It just says bind and C. So there's just a few little things. Uh, creating models um, seems to be a little weird. I'm not sure what's going on with that. I have finally been able to create um, different models when I would uh, like duplicate. I would try to just what I do typically in OpenTX is just duplicate my models and then just like change the name and like add a curve, do whatever, you know, it's the easiest way to do it uh, that I found. And it really wasn't working that way. I would change the name and then go back out to select the model and all of the model names would be the same as the first one that I created, even after I had went back in and changed all of them. But then it started working. Um, I don't know if that's because I bound a craft to it. I don't really know how the, the two know uh, how they all work together like that. But now you'll see in this video that I have a 339 named model, a uh, Flight 1 named model, and I just got doing it uh, doing it again on my Betaflight quad, beta quad, and now I have a Betaflight model. Um, and that's pretty much it. So it's hard to record the screen. None of my cameras were flickering pretty bad. So I used a GoPro um, and that was able to capture it. So it's not the most polished video, but you know, trying to give you guys a real view of what this thing looks like and what it's doing. So have a look and let me know what you think. And this fit the next video, we'll come back and we'll talk about like my flight experiences with it and stuff like that. I've just hovered it here in the, the house. Haven't done any real flights with it yet, but I'm going to go try that out now. So here's the rest of the video, guys. All right, guys, so here it is. Let's talk Tango 2 for a little bit. First of all, quick unboxing comes in the regular box, comes in this little carry bag in the tray, and that is it. Battery was at storage charge, so I've went ahead and charged it up. A bit and I've also created a couple models and I have bound it to the flight one diatone 339 and my flight one uh, quad over here so I only have this one two of these and one beta flight quad so I haven't done a beta flight uh, quad yet flight one's making it I think a little bit easier so first of all let's talk about how it fits and feels um, this does not feel like a toy. This thing really does feel good and super solid. Um, just even on uh, the test hovers that I did here in the house, 
I'm going to go outside and fly this soon. Um, it felt really, really good um, and firm and nice and in control. So I'm definitely thinking I'm going to have to play with my rates and smoothing a little bit. But this thing feels super solid. The antenna and all that stuff is great. The gimbals and everything are as advertised. Uh, the one thing that is a little tricky is going to be navigating through OpenTX and using the scroll wheel here. Um, it's kind of like reversed, I think, in direction, at least the way that I think it should work. But once you make the mistake a few times, you'll figure that out. Also, when you're trying to click, you click down here on the bottom of the scroll wheel, not up here. It only clicks in like down here on this pointy end. So that can get a little confusing and make you make some uh, typos if you're trying to change like model names and stuff like that. So that's something definitely to take uh, into consideration. So if we turn it on, Welcome to Tango 2. try to just run through some stuff here that uh, maybe will concern some of you and we'll see if we can yeah, the camera refresh rate is going to just mess everything up. That's a shame. So for the most part, everything is the same here. If you're used to OpenTX, um, you hit the menu button here, and that will take you into the crossfire menu. So if you want to stay there, you just go ahead and press the bottom of the scroll wheel, and then you can, of course, select uh, your Tango 2 here, or if you're bound up to a receiver you can scroll down and see that so if we go into the menu here it's exactly everything that we are used to seeing that's on the back of our crossfire so that's no big deal there so if we go all the way back out and we hit menu and you can see one of 13 so that's the first menu so then we start going through our typical open tx stuff right there and that's where you'll set your models and channels and everything like that. Um, I have a throttle curve set in here for my Diatone 339s. And it's probably hard to see this, but most of you people should know what's going on. Uh, right here, I just set up a couple uh, va values on a switch for audible alerts just to kind of get a feeling of, uh, you know, the audio. Uh, the power output and stuff like that and my RSSI so want to see how that kind of works out and then of course if you keep on going all the way to the end there's where you can set up your telemetry screens which I have set up right here I've got receiver quality transmitter quality RSSI uh, frequency mode transmitter power and signal to noise ratio so when I set up both of my quads, I was able to bind to both of my Nano RXs and update them with this. So that wasn't a problem at all. If we're going to go ahead and try to switch models, um, you hold in the button down here and that'll bring up this. So you select model, select there. And you can see that I have two models, uh, the 339 and then uh, Flight 1. I have those different because I keep the curve on the 339 and not on a regular Flight 1 uh, machine. And it seems like it's kind of weird. I I went through these and was creating models, and it was not saving the name of the model that I was putting it in. It just kept duplicating everything at 339. But then once I actually bound to that model, it let me actually save the name. So flight one, I don't know why, um, but that's just what it did. So there's your normal stuff right here. Select create model. So if we select the 339 and go to that one, you can see we're on the Diatone 339 now. And if we plug it in, Now it's on. And then if we want to turn the audio on to see. 25 milliwatts, 40 dB. So we're getting all that audio stuff from it. And if we want to go and see our telemetry, we just hit page over and there's all of our telemetry values for the Diatone uh, 339 right there. 
And then if we want to go and check out the other model, we can go and select the flight one. Switch warning. So that'll be this one over here. All right, yeah, there we go. You can see the battery was dead there. So we're getting our transmit power, RSSI, everything like that. Uh, we can see all of that stuff changing, the link qualities and all that stuff. And everything is good on that. A uh, couple things, when you're doing some things in OpenTX, things are going to get are getting cut off on the right hand side here. For example, if you go into the crossfire menu here, and so see now you can see we have access to uh, the Nano and we can go through and do all the stuff on that. So we can go through and do all of our different changes and our different outputs and all that kind of stuff. Uh, flight one doing link quality on channel eight. Um, so, gonna see here. so if we go in to here, like if you go to bind and whenever it's done binding and everything, you'll see over here it, I'm assuming it would say bind complete, but it's actually cutting off things here on the side, um, which really isn't that big of a deal but it's just kind of something that's uh, happening that might trick uh, some people up. Same thing like when I went into like special functions here, you can see kind of, I don't know if you can see this on the GoPro or not. That's the only thing that, that's picking up the screen. But like when you're setting stuff up over here, it's all squished in. You can see that transmit power. You always have like a plus and a minus and stuff like that. Like that's being overlapped by the numbers here as far as like every 10 seconds or whatever. So that's uh, kind of a little annoying thing that I've seen happening. So, I mean, offhand, that's pretty much what's going on right off the bat with uh, this actual Tango 2. So I plan to go fly it now and stuff like that and follow up with you guys and let you know how things are going. But I just wanted to let everybody know that this thing is, I think, better than advertised. Um, I don't think they overhyped this radio at all as far as how it feels and everything like that. I think this really, I mean, it feels so much better than any of the, the cheap plastic radios that I have, like the X90 Lite or whatever. I mean, it feels just as solid as any Tyrannus does, um, just not as big and bulky. Uh, the weight on it is like really good. Um, the rubberized textures, um, there's just a slight difference and a slight grip to them. It's nothing super crazy at all. Uh, but me for a thumber, like this is gonna be just, uh, just fantastic. So I'm pretty excited about it and we'll let you guys know how things go. Thank <laughs> you.